Welcome back to The Explanation Pro. Today I'll recap an American drama film called, Camp X-Ray. Spoilers incoming. The movie begins with a man arriving at his house while the news of the 9-11 attacks plays on his television. He walks to a table and lays out multiple cell phones on it. He then walks to a room and starts to pray until a person covers his head with a bag and takes him away to a detention camp. Eight years after the intro, a line of soldiers passes by a block while the people inside the cells yell at them. They go to a room where they're given initial instructions and a tour before a superior officer named Ransdell asks for volunteers to hold down a detainee who's causing trouble. One of the new soldiers, Cole, volunteers. She's told to hold back the detainee's arm, which she tries until the detainee hits her with his elbow. She steps back and the others manage to overpower the detainee. They strap him down and take him outside the cell, where he spits on Cole. She then kicks him as payback before the detainee is strapped to a wheelchair and locked back in his cell. Later on, the earlier event becomes the conversation topic on the bus. Ransdell tries to flirt with Cole but she turns him down. She then has a video call with her mom that night. The next day, she's assigned to give out books to the detainees. She tries to ask one if he wanted a book but the detainee begins to be aggressive toward her. Ransdell steps forward and tells him to calm down. The detainee says that he'll take a book but Ransdell would have to give it to him. Ransdell then explains that prisoners just don't like women. Cole pushes the cart to sell 105. The prisoner rants about how he's been asking for the last Harry Potter book for two years already. She gets annoyed and tells him that all they have is what's on the cart and impatiently tells him to pick. He then asks for the Azkaban book and Cole asks if it was an Arab book. The prisoner laughs at her before clarifying that it was part of the Harry Potter series. She goes out for a run and looks at the bay before a new day and a new shift starts. This time, she's doing rounds to check up on the detainees. The prisoner in cell 105 tries to start a conversation with her but Cole ignores him. He calls her, Blondie, and tries to ask for her real name but she still doesn't answer. He then introduces himself as Allie. He continues to try to talk to Cole but she doesn't answer his questions, only tells him to shut up. She compares him to Hannibal Lecter and explains that he's a man in a movie that was very talkative. Ali says that he's never heard of the movie and Cole snaps that it's probably banned from he's from. Ali, confused, asks if it was banned in Germany. Another prisoner says something in their native language while Ali keeps on talking. The other prisoners then wrap their Qurans in white sheets. Ali asks for some water and promises to stop talking. She opens the hole in his cell to give him a bottle when suddenly, Ali throws a cup filled with human feces at her. Other soldiers come to her aid before eventually calling another unit to hold down Ali. Later on, the soldiers are on a yacht to fish where Ransdell continues to flirt with Cole. They have a party that night where Cole drinks too much and starts to become drunk. She goes to the bathroom and finds some adult magazines. Ransdell follows after her and she teases him with it. They then start to make out before Cole tells him to stop and pushes him back when he doesn't listen. Meanwhile, Ali is being transferred to different cells every two hours as punishment. Cole then sees that Ali's cell is being investigated. She picks up a cup and sees that it has a neat design drawn by Ali. The other soldier takes it and places it in a bag as evidence. She leaves and sees Ali, tired and being dragged back to his cell by two guards. Cole then sneaks to find Ali's file. She flips the papers over and finds pictures of him unconscious and injured. The last picture shows a pair of hands seemingly holding his face up. She then looks at his records and saw that had multiple offenses already. She sees the brevity code, Alfred Hitchcock on the block, and asks a fellow soldier what it means. He explained that it meant a psychiatrist visited the detainee. She thanks him and leaves as he goes back to playing solitaire on his computer. During lunch, another soldier named Cruz sits down with Cole. She asks him if he's ever read Harry Potter. He scoffs at her and says that he hasn't before asking why. She quickly dismisses it. During rounds, Cole glances at Ali and sees that he's solving a Sudoku puzzle. Ali then starts to contemplate before he stands by the glass and asks her if she knows Sudoku. He then tells her that he's finished all the Sudoku books in there so he had to make his own. Ali starts a conversation about Sudoku before mentioning that he attended university. He tried to give it to her but she turns it down, saying that it's against the rules. Ali then starts to become angry. 
he starts to rant before sarcastically telling Cole that the Sudoku was a secret message so she was right to be scared, before flushing it down the toilet. He then calls them the terrorists, which causes Cole to angrily tell him to keep quiet. Cole then tells him that the Harry Potter book he's looking for isn't in the library, despite what another guard had told him. He then apologizes for being persistent about the book and he tells her that not knowing how things were going to end is driving him crazy. The prisoners have a prayer in their cafeteria while the soldiers have a flag-raising ceremony. Eight months later, Cole tries to convince the prisoners to eat as they are on their fifth day of a hunger strike. None of them take her offer and she then tells them that they know what's coming next. Later, one of the prisoners is taken out of his cell and strapped down before having an IV inserted inside him. A higher ranking officer asks the other soldiers if they know why the prisoners are refusing to eat. Cole then tells him that she's heard that he wants to have an elliptical machine. The officer enters the block and talks to the prisoner, their request is granted. Cole watches over Ali as he kicks a ball inside a cage. She then asks him if he'd ever use the elliptical machine to which he says no and that none of the prisoners would use it. She then asks why, and he says that she should just ask the prisoner who requested it named Mahmoud. He then tells her that he only got to 12 kicks that day and that another prisoner from another block got to 40 kicks although he wouldn't know if that was true as only the guards get to see the other block. He does think that the other prisoner was lying. Cole tells him that if he gets to beat that 40 kicks record then she'll vouch for him. He tries again but only gets to 8, and he jokingly tells her that it was 48. She then says that obedient detainees get to play soccer on a field with other detainees and that he could get to play with them if he just became more compliant. He says that he knows that but he still won't because it would mean that he's validating their abuse. He calms down, saying that she probably thinks he's stupid but Cole says he's not, joking that he's smart enough to be in university. The two of them laugh together before Mahmoud passes by them and angrily yells at Ali. Cole is then called by Ransdell and he asks her what they're talking about and she tells him that it's nothing. Ransdell tells if that if that's the case then they shouldn't be talking at all. Ali calls out to Cole and tells her that he was able to do 20 kicks, which makes her chuckle. Ransdell then tells her that he would need her help to watch over the showers as his other men are preoccupied. Ransdell then tells Ali to strip down and take a shower. Ali hesitates with Cole there but Ransdell threatens to send an IRF to force him. Ali follows and Ransdell makes sure that Cole is watching, which is against their sop and the Quran. That night, the other soldiers find Cole drinking. Cole then tries to sympathize with one of them, who was supposed to watch the showers with Ransdell, as they were too busy cleaning up a detainee cell. The soldier is confused and tells her that the block was peaceful that day. Cole realizes that Ransdell lied to her Cole files a report against Ransdell and she's summoned into their superior's office. The higher ranking officer sides with Ransdell and discredits her report because she was being too friendly with Ali. She is then told that there'll be a hearing about the case soon and dismisses her. She goes to the mess hall to eat and she sits down with Cruz. Cruz asks her if the food was good before telling her that someone tried to hang themselves the other night. Cole is confused, as the detainees are closely guarded by the soldiers. Cruz then tells her that it wasn't a detainee that attempted but a guard, who managed to survive. Cole starts to say that she feels guilty but Cruz shuts her down, saying that she's being manipulated by the detainees. He then leaves and Ransdell passes by her to taunt her. She continues to do her job as a guard although she starts to grow more sensitive towards the situation of the detainees. She also becomes more isolated from the other soldiers. While cleaning a cell, Cole gets news that she's being transferred to the night shift. Meanwhile, Ali looks at the clock outside his cell and is confused because Cole isn't there. He asks if the clock was on the right time, to which the soldier there told him that it was. He then asks the soldier where Cole was but he doesn't get an answer. During the night shift, Cole passes by Ali's cell during rounds and sees that he's asleep. She walks away before Ali calls out to her and gets up. Cole tells him to go back to sleep but he says that he never gets any decent sleep anyways. He tries to ask why she's there but stops because he knows that she's not allowed to say. Cole then explains that she snitched on someone. Ali doesn't know what the word snitch is and thinks it's a Harry Potter reference. She tells him the meaning of the word. He then realizes that the person she snitched on was Ransdell, even though she wouldn't outright say it. Ali asks her why she was there on the base in the first place. She turns the question on him and he assures her that he was not with any terrorist group. 
They then start to talk about their hometowns, where Ali tells him that he's from Germany while Cole simply says that she's from a small town. Another soldier enters the block and gives Cole a cup of coffee, before saying that she wouldn't be on the night shift for too long. Ali asks her what date it was and she tells him that it's July 14th. He then realizes that she would be leaving next month as the guards change every August. He asks her if she would try to get assigned to the camp again, to which she says no. Cole mentions that she's learned a lot from her time there and that the new guards would eventually learn too. Ali then asks her what exactly it is that she's learned before reminding her that the two of them are enemies. He then gets his Quran and takes out a blade that was hidden between the pages. He kneels on the ground and Cole sees him holding the knife. He immediately holds it to his throat and tells her that if she tries to radio the other guards, then he'll use the knife immediately. She tries to talk him down but he tells her that he's tired of being imprisoned there, saying that he's barely even living anyways. Cole tells him that her name is Amy and that she's from Moore Haven, Florida. She then asks Ali if there's a zoo in Bremen, which surprises him. Cole explains that she went to the zoo when she was a child because she wanted to see something outside of her town. She felt uncomfortable then to see the animal locked up in small cages. Ali scoffs and says that he knows that she's trying to say that the zookeepers didn't have a choice whether the animals are locked up or not but she disagrees. She tells him that she thinks that the animals should have had the chance to be free. Cole circles around the block a few times before nervously checking on Ali again. She sees that he's still alive, still holding the blade to his throat but this time, he's crying. He then drops the knife and gives it to her. Cole then holds his hand as she too cries. She is then seen packing up her things from her room before leaving. Ali lies down on his bed before a soldier knocks on his door. He gets up and sees that it's a new soldier who's trying to give out books to the detainees. Ali starts to taunt him before noticing something in the cart. He tells the soldier to give it to him and realizes that it's the last Harry Potter book. He opens it to look at the cover page where there's a note from Cole. The movie ends as Cole is leaving the camp while Ali sits on his bed and starts to read the book he had been waiting to get for years. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video please hit the like button and also subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. See you in the next video.